Farming can be very lucrative with a farmer who knows what he's doing. The yields per hectare for most crops are good, which means most of us could make quite a good income or at least grow our own food on a reasonably small piece of land. Now we have some extraordinarily rich farmers out there, we decided to have a look at the richest of them. So meet the world's richest farmer. But before we get into the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on so you don't miss any of the new videos we post. Farming statistics. The richest farmers are mostly in the USA and China. That makes sense with the two countries being the richest in the world, and China on its way to being the richest country in the world within years. The majority of Chinese nationals live in rural areas, about 40.3%, while only 17.7% of US citizens live in rural areas. The major difference is that the percentage of US citizens living in rural areas has remained stable since 1990, while China's has decreased. In terms of food availability, the US is not producing as much food as China is, but then again, the USA has less citizens than China. The total production of cereals in China for 2019 was just under 615 million tons, while the USA produced 420 million tons. Before we get to the richest farmer in the world, we thought we would take a look at other rich farmers. Of the top 7 richest farmers in the world, 2 are Chinese, 2 are American, 1 is Australian, 1 is Brazilian, and 1 a New Zealander. 5 of them are billionaires. Although all the people on this list are millionaires and even billionaires, all are making their fortune from farming. None of them owns any of the biggest farms in the world, nevertheless it is worth appreciating that with a few exceptions, all the people on this list are self-made millionaires who had the courage to invest their money and time in the agricultural industry, facing an extraordinarily strong competitive environment. Colin and Dale Armour The Armour family has secured a spot on the list of the richest people in New Zealand thanks to their phenomenally successful dairy farm. They own the Dairy Holdings, the largest dairy farming conglomerate in New Zealand worth approximately $535 million. Colin and Dale Armour started their business, a family-owned dairy farm in the 1990s, but now the group owns and operates 58 dairy farms in the South Island alone, along with supporting grazing blocks for the cows. While increasingly involved in industry standard activities, the Bay of Plenty couple have historically kept a low public profile, quietly going about building their businesses, which today involve close to 100 New Zealand farms and production of more than 20 million kilograms of milk solids per year. Tony Parrish Tony Parrish is not a billionaire yet, but is on his way there. Tony Parrish and his brother inherited a dairy farm from their parents. The farm was founded in 1951, starting with 25 milking cows. Today, the farm owns more than 2,000 cows and has branches in West Wyalong and Trianji in Australia, where the company grains and rears stock. Tony Parrish's net worth is estimated at $750 million. Interestingly, as with other so-called tycoons of Western Sydney, such as Chicken King Bob Ingham and housing pioneer Jim Masterson, Tony Parrish stays under the radar and refuses to flaunt his wealth. Blero Maggi Blero is the only non-American or Chinese on this list who is a billionaire. Blero Borges Maggi was born on the 29th of May 1956 and is a Brazilian billionaire businessman and former governor of the state of Mato Grosso. Maggi owns the Amagi Group, a large company that harvests, processes, and exports soybeans and owns soy terminals, highways, and waterways. You could say that Blero Maggi has the agricultural business in his hood, as he is the son of Andre Maggi who founded Andre Maggi Group, the largest private soybean producer in the world. The group reported sales of $3 billion in 2012, ensuring a spot for Blero Maggi on Forbes' list of the richest men in the world. Impressive! The Andre Maggi Group is led by Andre's wife, Lucia, but Blero Maggi owns more than 16% of the group. The company has interest in fertilizers, energy, rubber extraction, and transportation. Blero Maggi was elected governor of the Mato Grosso state in Brazil in 2012. Mato Grosso is practically a haven for soybean production. Now, he is a senator representing the state of Mato Grosso, lobbying for the carbon compensation market to prevent farmers from cutting down forests. Good for him. Harry Stein Harry Stein is an American billionaire businessman, the founder and owner of Stein Seed. He was ranked by Forbes magazine as the richest man in the state of Iowa in 2015. Harry Stein is the brain behind Stein Seed, a successful genetics company. He has an estimated worth of about $3.6 billion. Harry Stein grew up on a farm near Des Moines, Iowa, and started his seed breeding business in the 1960s. Suffering from dyslexia and mild autism, Stein is a savant when it comes to data and math. What is your excuse for not having what you want in 
American life. Steinseed is the largest private seed company in the world, creating some of the most genetically robust soybean seeds. Farm boy turned seed genetics savant Harry has made a fortune licensing corn and soybean genetics to multinationals like Monsanto and Syngenta. Stein founded and run Steinseed. Apparently, his current obsession is tinkering with seed genetics that allow for better yields or pesticide resistance. Stein became fascinated with seeds when he was a boy growing up in Iowa. He started farming at just five years old, driving a tractor to pick up straw bales. Stein is also a formidable negotiator. In the 1990s, he struck highly lucrative licensing deals with large multinational corporations across the globe, which formed the backbone of his empire. He's donated to numerous Iowa institutions, including McPherson College, Drake University, and Spurgeon Manor, a skilled nursing facility for seniors. Liu Yonghao is regarded as one of the richest people in China, with a fortune estimated by Forbes in 2016 at about $4.1 billion, built initially on a chicken and quail farm that he founded with his brothers. In 1982, he decided to start his own business, together with his three brothers. To raise money and finance the business idea, the four sold their bikes and watches, managing to get about $120. It covered the working capital to start a business. The brothers invested their money in purchasing and rearing quails and chickens and sold them to farmers in the mostly rural Sichuan province. They grew their business, starting a sales network for animal feed. Talk about entrepreneurial spirit! In 1992, their business, Hope Group, was one of the largest networks of animal feed suppliers. And one of the largest non-governmental conglomerates in the country. In 1996, the four brothers split their agricultural empire. Liu Yonghao renamed his business the New Hope Group. His company is now one of the largest agricultural companies in China. In 2013, he ceded the reins of the business to his daughter Liu Chang, but has retained a place on the company board. Along the way, Liu Yonghao has diversified his business to real estate and chemical industries. He has also been a vice president of the board of China's Minchang Bank. Stuart and Linda Resnick, the largest part of the Resnick family fortune, estimated at $4.2 billion, comes from the pistachios and almonds grown on their 64,000-acre farms in California. They invested more than $100 million in sustainable technologies to create drought-resistant pistachios to adapt to the ongoing drought in California during recent years. From almonds and oranges in California's Central Valley to grapefruits in South Texas, Stuart and Linda Resnick owe their billions to nature's bounties. Nearly half of all Americans purchase one of their products, including Halo's Mandarin Orange oranges, and specifically Palm Wonderful and Fiji Water. In September 2019, they pledged $750 million to the California Institute of Technology for climate change crisis research. Stewart bought his first farmland in California in 1978 as a hedge against inflation, thus beginning their agricultural empire. Described as a marketing genius, Linda dropped out of college at 19 to start her own ad agency. Stewart initially was a client for his janitorial business. The couple also owns a majority stake in the Kern Water Bank, one of California's California's largest underground water storage facilities. The richest farmer in the world is Liu Yongjing. Liu Yongjing was born in June 1948. Liu Yonghao is his brother. He is a Chinese businessman and the honorary president of the Shanghai Chamber of Commerce in Sichuan, a part-time professor at China Agricultural University, MBA lecturer and member of the Standing Committee of the CPPCC or Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, kind of like the only political party in China, which makes him quite powerful as well, along with his brother. Brothers Liu Yongxing started a small farm of chickens and quills in the 1980s. As the decades passed, he became one of the richest people in China, with a fortune estimated at least $6.6 .6 billion. He formed the East Hope Group in the early 1990s after parting ways with his other three brothers. All the siblings launched their own agribusiness companies, with both Liu Yongxing and his brother Liu Yonghao being ranked on the Forbes richest list. The East Hope Group is involved in agriculture, real estate, and heavy industry. In the agricultural industry, the company is focused on mainly producing animal feed, with a product range of more than 100 products. In 2012, Liu Yongxing was rewarded with the 2001 CCTV Top China's Economic Leaders Award, as well as with the Sohu 2001 Top 10 Financial Leaders Award. This video gives the song Old MacDonald Had a Farm a whole new meaning. Who knew one could become so rich from farming? It must be mentioned that there are thousands of well-off farmers across the globe, and the list should change regularly. China should produce more rich farmers due to his vast fertile swaths of oil, cheap labor, and the market demand. We'll have to keep an eye on this list because it should change soon. That is all we have time for today. Check back next time for another interesting video. Until then, take care and stay safe.